It's now time for Ermani and Edwards with Maz, live on the Woodward Sports Network. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m. Starring Ryan Ermani, Michigan great and former NFL baller Braylon Edwards, and of course, Tom Mazaway. Let's talk some sports. Let's go Friday show, November 17th, 2023. Ermani and Edwards with Mass. Woodward Sports Network, woodwardsports.com, fox2detroit.com, or the Fox local app. If you're watching on YouTube, we say thank you and hello. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. Braylon Edwards, good afternoon to you, my friend. Good afternoon, my friend Ryan Ermani. Feeling good. Woke up early. Got a chance to go to Howl and give some turkeys away, man, for the turkey, the turkey season that's coming up, man. It always feels good to get out there, work with vet life. So I'm feeling good, man. I feel positive energy. Tom Mazaway feels good today as well. How you doing, young man? I'm doing good, Ryan. It's Friday. We made it again, huh? Absolutely. We made it again. I got a bachelor weekend, so uh, it's all good. Hey, you know what else is all good? I just want to say this off the top of the show. Uh, I want to welcome Matt Shepard to the Woodward yes. Sports family. Matt Shepard was on Big D Energy earlier today. Big he co hosted a show with Terry Foster. You're going to see uh, Matt sprinkled in a little bit here and there throughout um, the holidays and, of course, uh, hopefully beyond. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, uh, Matt Shepard brings a professionalism uh, to this network in any way that he is he adds an element of credibility he adds an element of professionalism and uh, it is just uh, we are so grateful and thrilled to have Matt Shepard a part of this network it was out. a phenomenal listen uh, earlier today and we invite each and every one of you to go check out the Big D Energy show that happened uh, earlier today. Matt Shepard with Terry Foster. Definitely, guys, he's around, man. And the big thing that you said is the professionalism, man. It's things I can learn from Matt Shepard and his professional cash. Uh, cash hey, so I'm, I'm excited that he's a part of the network. And this is going to be a great thing, man. I think we're getting better and better as we move forward to 2024 and what this sports town can be. And having Matt Shepard on board, man, we appreciate having you, man. Let's, let's do some great things. Hey, this is like my third gig. With Matt, and every one of them, I've always had a great time <laughs> with them. And we we did back in the day. We did news radio 950. We did the ticket. We did Michigan basketball together. Uh, and now we get to do Woodward Sports together. So it's great to have our brother Matt here. Absolutely. Guys, let me just set up the show for you. Uh, coming up in about 25 minutes from now, we'll talk to Tom Thayer, who's the Bears radio analyst and 1985 Super Bowl champion with the Chicago Bears. Also played his college football at Notre Dame. We'll talk to him about Lions and Bears. At the top of our number two, we'll talk to former play-by-play -play voice of the Michigan Wolverines, Jim Bradstad, a longtime uh, University of Michigan voice and uh, Detroit Lions radio analyst as well. Uh, Jim Brandstetter will join us top of our number two. That is where we will start, uh, Braylon, as well. Lots to get to regarding the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, the new uh, news today is that linebackers coach Chris Partridge was let go. He was fired today as Michigan linebackers coach. And before, I think, Everybody kind of jumps on uh, the Connor Stallions bandwagon. I do believe, uh, at least from what I'm learning, is that this was about trying to cover up evidence, trying to cover it up. Uh, not an insinuation that he knew anything about what Connor Stallions has done, but uh, for, again, from what I'm hearing, this was about trying to cover up uh, some information during the investigation, not uh, being associated with Connor Stallions or anything like that. So that is the first part of this news today, Braylon. Just hearing how it lays out like that, you know, being a Michigan guy, and I've been very on the side of Michigan. I've been on the side of due process. I've been on the side of Jim Harbaugh believing and taking him at his word, and I still do that. But just listening to these things and how they came out and how they look, you know, I will be a liar if I said this doesn't look good. Yesterday you have Michigan accepting the three-game suspension that Big Ten handled down, that handed down last Friday, uh, maybe an hour from now last Friday, and then you have this coming on. They accept the penalty. Now this guy gets fired. Now it's just another thing. It's just starting to point to maybe more was known in Ann Arbor than was, and maybe it wasn't, but it's just it doesn't look good. And me being a guy, I have to be honest with everybody out there who support this show 
It's not looking good for Ann Arbor. It's not looking good for what we once thought. I still don't know the full details, and we have to wait till they all come out. But, Ryan, this doesn't look good, man. You you, oh. you started talking about it yesterday. You started to see the chinks in the armor. You started to see, you know, that cookie crumbling. And I'm not lying, man. That cookie is less than half right now. You're not kidding, man. And when it all comes down to it, Harbs is not coaching the next three games. Uh, well, two. the next two. He already uh, served 33.3% of his three-game suspension. But when they took that, that deal yesterday, Obviously, uh, they must have heard, oh, well, the Big Ten's going to tell them, well, you know what, we heard about this Chris Partridge doing something. Oh, oh, you heard about that? Oh, okay, uh, well, we'll have to take care of that. And then there's another story that the Big Ten kind of told Michigan about some booster named Uncle T. Which we can confirm is not Tom Mazoway, and we it's can not. confirm <laughs> it is not Terry Foster. No. Okay, we have, it, that's it what our sources on the Foster. ground are telling us. It wasn't but, me. I don't have the yeah, money. So the NCAA presented evidence that <laughs> this booster, Uncle T, and it is not Tom Brady, apparently, either. No. Um, Uncle T, right. How about he, Tom Goss? That he funded the I'm, operation I'm of <laughs> Connor Stallions, which... Uh, again, that is out there. Here's, I just want to say this, too, because, you know, this happened towards the end of our show yesterday. Do you have something to say about Uncle T? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, one thing that really points to it points to the rogue situation of Connor and Uncle T, whoever the hell Uncle T is, he's figuring that thing out. Somebody paid for it, and that's why it was kind of off the books. It's definitely a rogue situation, but, man, it all is starting to come back and impact. It's just it's just this annoying situation. I'll let you take over for that. Hey, guys, watch, just, watch Blue Chips tonight if you don't know who Uncle T is. I just Nick don't. Nolte, ha listen, sweet, happy. Yeah. So, so this stuff that's coming out, I don't believe this was known. This right. was known by the NCAA. This was known by the Big Ten. And this was known by Michigan. Yeah. So even though it's coming out, I don't think it spells this enormous doom and gloom for Michigan that a lot of other people see. This is new news to us, but this is not new news to them. Let me ask a question. Why would, uh, just, just curiosity, ask a question. Why would they get fired after Michigan already accepts a uh, accepts the suspension, accept the punishment? Like, if they accept, wasn't part of the exception, if we accept, then the case is closed. There's no longer need to look into what we're doing. No need to look. We're all moving on, including the Big Ten, NCAA, and Michigan. If that's the case, then why announce the firing today as opposed to before? Well, they could have announced it yesterday, I, I imagine. I imagine they got this information this week. Gotcha. The NCAA uh, gave put forward this in this news this week. So, okay. I would surmise that. Okay. Yesterday morning was supposedly when they made the deal, and we didn't hear about it till uh, 3.15 yeah. in the afternoon. So who knows how deep this goes. As far as yesterday went, Jim Harbaugh was expected to talk today, right? Yep. He was supposed to go to court today, plead Michigan's case, and he's supposed to be on the sidelines for the next two games. That didn't happen. Now, yesterday we kind of thought, man, was this Jim's idea or did someone force this on him? Because we all thought that Jim is a man of principle. Uh, he stands on his, uh, he stands on his, on his word. He stands on business. Yeah, he stands say. on his business. And he wanted to go out and, and, and tell people, I didn't know, I didn't do this, we did this, but how about what they did? And it was like a hush-hush thing now. We're not going to find out about uh, Purdue uh, Rutgers in Ohio State now. I guess we're not going to find out about anything. We're not going to find out, uh, which disappoints me. But now that you get another coach fired, so far you got Matt Weiss under FBI investigation. Now Chris Partridge is gone. Harbaugh's coaching six games only out of the year. Uh, you got Sam, uh, Hamburger Gate. I don't know what the, don't know what the hell's going on here. Was on Michigan staff. So yeah. here's where here's where this whole thing goes awry for me a little bit because I honestly. To be to be totally honest with yeah. you, just to strip strip back, peel back the onion and strip everything back for you. I feel today like I just walked in the door, kind of squatted down and got kicked in the balls. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel a little bit. And I'll tell you why. It almost feels like to me that it was this bravado from Michigan that I really fed into. Yeah. We're going to take you to court. If we're going down, we're going down too. Uh, I, Harbaugh on Monday, I can't wait to speak on Friday. Not going to keep me down. We're America's team. And it was this constant, hey, we're not. We didn't do anything wrong. 
We're going to fight this to the end. We're not going to settle with you. And it was really that bravado that I think galvanized the Michigan community. No, you're not coming after us. We're all going to get your back now. It, it, and, and just to kind of, it feels like a little bit of a Western. You know yeah. the old Western where you walk into the saloon, you've got your, your, your double barreled, you walk into the saloon, you're ready to fire, yeah. and, and you walk in. And you put and you put your uh, arms down. You put them behind your back, and you walk out in handcuffs. Yeah. I mean, it, it just it kind of feels like they almost took our loyalty for granted here. You know, it yeah. almost feels like uh, y- 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 just pulled one over on us in terms of the loyalty. And, and look, I think that Michigan is is going to be fine. Yeah, I really do. Um, I think that Michigan is going to win the Big Ten Championship. I think they're going to win the National Championship. And if they do, that is going to be one hell of a story. And if they don't, I'm wrong. And nothing yeah. happens either. Um, I do think Jim Harbaugh will resign. Not resign. Not resign. I think he will resign. Yeah. So that part aside, it's this kind of feeling of, Hey, we're going to go to war. We're going to leave the Big Ten. We're going to war. And then you just, you, you kind of just, uh, yeah, we're going to settle. It's just, it's it doesn't look, it does not make me feel good about that. I got to get a break. I, can, can We got a two-hour. I, I got it. Relax. Okay, okay. I, I got you. I somebody's going to tell you my thoughts on that when we got back. But first, Thank I was going to give you a message Please. from Dispo. Please. Uh, Dispo, Romeo, your local plug, now open till midnight in uh, in Romeo, Michigan. Look, they're the best uh, They're the best dispensary going. It's Michigan's largest cannabis mall. 21 and up you have to be. Recreate only, man, but they got the best ways to consume your cannabis, whether it's oil, whether it's flour, or whether it's edibles, man. They even have cream that you can put on as you get those aches and pains going. THC and CBD infused, of course. Dispo Romeo, open till midnight. the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, September 13th. Join now at any Metro Detroit location. Hurry, offer ends soon. Woodwood Sports own Tom Mazaway and Sam Stick Day will be hosting our Lions post game show after every Lions game all season long. Tune into the Woodwood Sports YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel. When buying real estate, flexibility and control over the sales process is key. Sellers, how would you like the freedom of canceling your listening agreement at any time for any reason with no penalty? That is exactly what Mark White and Associates offers. It is called the Minute by Minute Listening Agreement by Mark White and Associates. Try Mark White, whether it's risk-free today, you can get their Minute by Minute Listening Agreement. Looking to buy real estate? Visit markwhitesales.com or call their number at 248-290-8242. MarkWhiteSales.com, where flexibility meets success. Woodward Sports Network, uh, Braylon uh, is uh, done from sitting tight. <laughs> Remember that from yesterday? Oh, sit yeah. tight, Matt. You got to sit yeah. tight. <laughs> We don't uh, like to sit tight. Yeah, just uh, again, just to recap for you, if you're just joining us, talking about this Michigan football situation, they have essentially backed down and agreed uh, to end the legal battle with the Big Ten. 
Uh, and Harbaugh will sit the suspension. Chris Partridge, linebacker coach, was fired today. That's all Michigan offered. We are hearing, I am hearing, that this is about destroying evidence, uh, yeah. hindering the investigation. And then there was this Uncle T who is a booster that uh, helped Connor Stallions uh, fund this operation. Uh, so that's where we're at. But again, just just to summar- summarize where I am on it, I just feel like the, the loyalty of the fan base was taken advantage of. It definitely was, and this is what Michigan does. It's an arrogant institution, and we know it, but we fall prelude to a kiss because we love that information. I will will run through a block. I will run through a brick wall for the block M. No matter whatever happens, I will run through a a brick wall. Even when I got into it with the institution and they turned their backs on me, I would never turn my back on the institution. So when you talk about that loyalty, when you talk about how we felt, when you talk about doubling down, when you talk about puffing your chest up because, hey, at the end of the day, it's Michigan that's on trial right now. Any other institution, all you alums would have done the same for yours. So I stand proud, and I'm waiting for that moment when you're going to find out that Jim Harbaugh didn't have anything or you're going to find out what Jim Harbaugh was thinking and what they were waiting for on this court date or what they were waiting for, the information that they had, and they were going to drop it like a bomb on the NCAA or they were going to drop it like a bomb on the Big Ten, and you would see how Michigan would prevail, and then you would feel even more lifted in, and you would feel more trusted in who you backed in terms of where you were, and then all of a sudden it's acceptance, and then the next day something else comes out along the lines of some, some coach trying to bury evidence, not knowing if it's true or not. It's just once again another thing. So the air is let out. And, yeah, Ryan, this is Michigan. We will always be okay. But in this moment, we're not okay. Now, in this moment, it's just a setback. In this moment, we don't know what's going to happen with Jim Harbaugh against Ohio, well, with Michigan versus Ohio State. We don't know what's going to happen with Michigan as it relates to after the Ohio State game. Where does Michigan go next year? So in this very moment, I am definitely feeling I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset at how this all played out because I feel like we blindly follow as we're supposed to. We blindly follow, and now we're kind of just crossroads like, Damn, my energy isn't the same right now. When I talk, my energy isn't the same. And people coming at us, it's like. So here's, you spark something in me because I feel like this, the university could have spared a lot of us the embarrassment, uh, you know, kind of walking back with our tails between our legs if they would have just kind of come out and said, Okay, here's the allegations. We're working with the NCAA. We uh, will see where the investigation goes. Uh, that's all we can do at this right. point. But it was this onslaught of us versus them, and we're going to get them, and maybe we're going to leave the Big Ten, and all this craziness. Can't wait to talk on Friday in due process. And then to just turn around is like, ah. Uh, God, two days on, they're tr- two days ago they're trolling not only ESPN, not only Fox, not only everybody that's against Michigan. Two days ago, Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are trolling, talking about America's team. America likes a team that does this and blah blah blah. And no, you're going to get to the bottom of this. That's the energy that we were behind. I was okay. I'm not going to say America's team, but at the same time, I will say they're definitely my team. They're definitely something I'm proud of, and I'm still proud of. Same. Yeah. It's, 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 like, one, yeah, it's like we're it, talking it, about two it, different things two here. 100%. Like, but what we're talking yeah. about is the reason why I'm proud is the reason why I'm pissed. Right. The reason why I'm proud is the reason why I'm embarrassed at the same time. Because now when I go talk to people, I told you were cheating. I told you I was other thing. I have nothing to say. Right. I have nothing to say because I can't say that. Well, you know, Jim didn't know about it. I don't know if he did or didn't. Well, I believe. Uh, I, I will say the I investigation. Believe, I, believe, I believe he did. But right. what I'm saying is you don't know what you don't know. Well, at this point, as of today, right. we know that he didn't know because that's what we're going by is this NCAA investigation. We and know, that's the latest information We know that today. the NCAA could not prove that Jim Harbaugh knew uh, or not. I, I don't want to get into semantics. I'm not getting semantics, yeah. but that's what the case says. It says we cannot prove, we cannot that connect the two. That is not what they said. We cannot connect the two. Yes. I'm not even trying to connect yeah. them. I'm just simply right. saying at this particular point, right. I don't know what's what in that army. Right. That's all I'm saying. And now so I'm talking to other people. You're talking to Michigan State fans or Ohio State fans. I don't or who, care about Michigan It doesn't State matter. People. But at the same time, we can't have those conversations. Yeah. Two days ago, we were having those conversations. Now it's like, okay. Well, you just throw your hands up. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Let me talk to you as a football fan. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't either. But you know, I'll tell you why. They, already t- they took the starch out of me. So guess what? Say what you want. Anybody can say what they want. 
people that played, like Braylon, yeah. or people that went to the uh, went to the university, like Ryan, or people like me that have been watching them since I was eight years old and I'm 62 now. They took the starch out of me. So don't tell me that they didn't take the starch out of that team. I agree. Okay? So these kids, we all said yesterday, oh, they're going to band together now. No, they were banded together. So if I was Michigan, I would have postponed this as long as I possibly could. Because now your great season is going to come into shambles. I'm telling you. How do you band together as the linebackers court right now? Your linebackers coach gets fired the yeah. day before the Maryland There's game. A discuss, it's like, a disgrace. How, how do you bounce back from that? Like, you just, don't. It's being honest, and I'm not playing victim. This isn't us playing victim. This is us just having a real conversation. They can't bounce back from that. I hope they can, but it, it's a tough situation right now. It's starting to turn into something that, in your words, Ryan, and I agree, could have potentially not come as far down as it's coming down so now. So here's where I disagree with both of you. Wait a minute. Okay. The season, to me, is over. I disagree with That's where I over. disagree with okay. you. I never said – I didn't say the season oh. was over. Oh. I simply said if your coach is fired, he's not suspended. He's not suspended with pay. He's not, you know, we'll get to the bottom. Right. He's fired, Ryan, right. the day before a game. What if you're a senior? You've been with this guy four years. Right. But, but what I'm saying is he's saying the season's over. You're saying how do you come back from that? I'm so, sure. Right? How do you – is that they what you They don't have said? the same vigor. That's what he's saying. Okay. There's I no way that. that those linebackers, that those kids – on that team, forget linebackers, the whole team. There's no way they could be as banded together as they They don't even have their coach but on the sideline. But what does that mean? It means that the, the teams like crappy Maryland. Lose? Maryland's going to cover tomorrow, and Ohio State's going to beat them. See, that I disagree with. Go ahead. Do you, do you think they're going to lose to Ohio State? I don't know. I don't know. Jim Harbaugh's not coaching. One coach gets fired. There's a lot going well, on. Nobody knows. I, I don't know, but you asked me a question. And I'm giving you an honest answer. I don't know if they're going to win or not. Right now, it's a tough, it's a tough hill to surmount. It is a tough hill to surmount, especially after the game that I saw last week. If we're keeping it a buck, they didn't necessarily go 32 runs in a row because they were proving a point. You're they right. ran 32 runs in a row because those two DNs were kicking those old linemen's ass. Yeah. So they chose to make the smart decision. I give Sharon Moore a lot of credit nice job, for making Brad. that decision. I saw that on top of firings, on top of acceptance, on top of Jim won't be there, on top of Ohio State is still a damn good cut, a still good damn program, and they're coming in an arbor. I don't know who's going to win, but right now there's a lot of things that can distract the University of Michigan players from playing their best game tomorrow and next Saturday as well. Yeah, well done. I agree with that. Nah. I agree with that, but I still think they're good enough to get through the next two weeks. I agree. I agree, but my chest isn't where it was two weeks ago. I, I, I am totally deflated, too. Okay. I've been yeah. gelded. Okay, cool. yeah. You know what being gelded yeah. means? No. That's a horse that had his testicles cut off. <laughs> I've been gelded. That's, <laughs> really, that's, that's about as real as it is. My, my, my balls right. are gone. Like it, They're gone. Yeah, man. Like, like, I got, like, like here's, here's the internal battle. Yeah. Because I hear everything you're saying, Okay. And I, 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 I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with it. I am totally def deflated. Whereas once my chest was pumped out, and I couldn't wait to wake up last Saturday and watch this football yeah. team play, I'm kind of like, eh, this freaking sucks, you know. But I do believe, and I've watched Ohio State play. Yeah, I'm, they're not good. I think Ohio State sucks. I do too. And I think Michigan is still good enough to beat Ohio State. Yeah. And if they do, what then? I, I'm, like, I'm, we're, right, we're, I'm like, right back with you. Like, like, like that, that's, that's what I'm trying to like get to. If they beat Ohio State, which I still yeah. expect them to be, beat Ohio State eight days from now, what then? Like... This is this is what then, and they get Harbaugh back, and this, everything's. This is what then. Mm -hmm. As of right now, we're talking about what it looks like right now. You're talking about Ohio State's not that good. I actually agree with you. Ohio State has gotten worse every year. They're not the same team they were last year. They're damn sure not the same team the year we beat them here in the snow blizzard. Your favorite game of all time. It was a nice picture of you on the sideline. But with that said, Penn State's not that good, and we know that. But they're better than Ohio State, and that's why I'm in a situation where I'm like. 
it's just a lot. But I'll give you a silver lining too. It's just a lot of distraction. It's a lot for the players. No coach. One coach gets suspended because he or fired because he's allegedly getting rid of evidence. It's so much going on. Players are starting to try and figure out what the hell is going on. The silver lining is this. Last year, they won the Big Ten. They went undefeated. They won the Big Ten championship, and they went to the semifinal game. Those guys are still on this team. Will Johnson was a freshman last year. He's back. The second highest graded DB in the country right now. Blake Corn was on that team. He's been on that team the last three years. He's back. One of the best leaders Michigan has ever had. You got J.J. McCarthy, who is coming into his leadership year. Last year, he was a player following Blake Corn, following Donovan Edwards, following that defense. This year, he's leading the team. So the silver lining is you got guys that have been there. You got guys that are good leaders. So they will lead. In place of Jim Harbaugh, that's what you do as a good coach. You get guys to lead. You teach guys how to lead so that they can lead in those moments that you need them. We're going to need J.J. in that moment. We're going to need Blake in that moment. But the good thing is we got them. We got guys that have been there through the war. So I actually believe in those guys. That's what's going to believe me. They think Michigan's still going to win. But damn it, Ryan Armani, if I'm not telling you, it is going to be a much tougher game than I thought it was going to be. Oh, God, be. yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So I still believe in the leaders and the guys on the team. I'm just telling you with all this, it takes a toll on you. Like these guys aren't forty and forty-four like you and I. I will these say, guys are nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. I will say I think the Big Ten almost screwed Ohio State just as much as they screwed Michigan it's here. Michigan off because if Michigan beats Ohio State without Jim Harbaugh, now what? Ryan Day's fired. You you just you cannot lose no. Urban Meyer to Michigan with an interim coach. Agree. Not at that school. So. I think the Big Ten really screwed Ohio State and almost as much as they screwed Michigan. To answer your question, because I definitely didn't answer, I got on the Or rant. Michigan My really apologies. screwed itself. But. To answer your question, once Michigan wins, then Harbaugh's back. Then we can get back to bravado and the middle fingers. Because at the end of the day, I don't care who has to say what. I don't care who thinks what about the win over Ohio State, about a win over whoever the hell comes out of the West, about a win over the semifinal, and then about a national championship like Paul Feinbaum and what he said. I could care less what people have to say if Michigan gets past Ohio State. So what? Served his time, and now he's back. I could care less. All right, coming up next, we're going to head to Chicago talk with Tom Thayer, Bears radio analyst. He won a Super Bowl with the Chicago Bears, and I believe we've crossed paths with Jim Harbaugh at uh, in Chicago as a member of the Bears. We'll talk to him, Lions and Bears from Ford Field on Sunday. Uh, we'll do that next, but first a message from Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you will experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout in just 30 minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all of this just for $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by. There are more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. Visit your local Planet Fitness today to join or check in uh, or check them out online at planetfitness.com. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Now, coming to Woodward Sports. Woodward and Main Street. The Woodward Sports Network Detroit Lions Show. Let's go! Catch Gabrielle D. Phillips, Matt Broder, and Terry Foster for all the latest news on your Detroit Lions every week. Only on the Woodward Sports Network YouTube channel and woodwardsports.com. Your home is your most important asset. Flexibility in the sales process is key. When you work with Mark White & Associates, you can cancel at any time, for any reason, without penalty. Speaking of flexibility, check this out. Who you work with matters. Hire the best broker in the game. Come to any 
Lady Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Woodward Sports own Tom Mazaway and Sam Stick Day will be hosting our Lions postgame show after every Lions game all season long. Tune into the Woodward Sports YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, September 13th. Join now at any Metro Detroit location. Hurry, offer ends soon. Brace yourselves, Detroit. As the sun begins to set, two of Woodward Sports' brightest young stars will be taking the mic for a brand new show. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. The dog days in Detroit are over, and the boys are unleashed. Join in on the banter and hop on the bandwagon of the number one night show on the internet. Tune into the Woodward Sports YouTube channel every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. Any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Hey gang, when it comes to your pet, don't settle. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supply, hands down, Michigan's best pet store, family owned and operated for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations, 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available, and curbside delivery as well. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. Check them out online at premierpetsupply.com. Hey, welcome back. Let's talk Lions and Bears with Bears radio analyst, oh, the 1985 Super Bowl champion, uh, Tom Thayer, joins us on the phone right now. How you doing, Tom? Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, I'm doing well. You know, it's nice to see a Pet Supplies commercial as I sit here with my three dogs. Oh. <laughs> it's nice for uh, those guys to get a little shout out. Hey, we got Appreciate you covered, that. Tom. If you're ever in Michigan, we got your Tom. dog food. <laughs> what type of uh, what type of dogs, Tom? I'll be there. Hey, t hey, Tom, what I, got, I got three French Bulldogs. I got... Why do all the tough guys got the small yeah. dogs, man? I, got a <laughs> I have a Pomeranian at home, man, so I definitely get it, man. Hey, Tom, before I... Uh, before you, know, uh, uh, you know, I have an old... I, I, uh, sorry, I think we got a crazy delay, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I think go we ahead. have a delay. Sorry, go ahead. We got you. Okay. Well, no, I was just saying, I, you know, I, I have an old guy, Ernie, who uh, was the first guy aboard, and then I was given a dog uh, that I think people got that really weren't into raising, that's Sweet Lou, and then I got another one named Rudy, uh, and I, I grew up with Rudy, so I had to name a dog after him that kind of looked like him. <laughs> Notre Dame. <laughs> hey, Tom, before we get into Lions and Bears, I do want to ask you if you, the biggest story around here, one of them anyways, is, is what Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are going through. You you guys actually crossed paths with the Bears in the late 80s, right? Yeah, Jim and I were teammates for a while with the Bears. And, uh, you know, the, the Jim Harbaugh I see in press conferences now is not the Jim Harbaugh that I was familiar with as a player. Although he was a super dedicated football player, um, you know, he came aboard with a lot of pressure on him being a first-rounder from Michigan while 
But we had Jim McMahon aboard. Then they traded Jim McMahon, and the, you know Jim uh, became our quarterback. But um, you know he, he's kind of a different guy that I see on press conferences that I knew as a player. Um, how different, if I can ask? You know, he was a happy-go-lucky, fun guy, a great teammate, had a great sense of humor. Um, he was, um, you know, just, he was always in superior condition. He was, you know, football meant a lot to him. He was as dedicated as he is a coach. But I don't see the, the fun, the, I don't see the smiling personality that I saw in the locker room or in the weight room or in the off-season preparation or even going out socially with him at times. And, um, you know, that's I, I miss that Jim Harbaugh because, like I said, when I see him in front of the podium, whether he's answering questions after a game or some of the, uh, you know, situations that he's been going through since the beginning of the year, it just seems like a, a more serious of a guy. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I miss the old Jim. The last question about Jim Harbaugh. If... Chicago makes a move with Matt Eberflus as their head coach at the end of the year. Is Harbaugh a guy that do you think Bears ownership would consider as head coach? I, I think every team that is willing to make, make a coaching change would consider Jim Harbaugh because of the success he's had in the NFL. Um, and they understand what type of program he can build. And the NFL is turning into a young man's sport. And I think he's probably got more in relation to young talent than he does some of the older guys that he's coached in his past. So I don't think Bears would be exclusive to having interest in him. I think every team out there that made a coaching change would have interest in him. Tom, always a pleasure to have you on the show, Brother Edwards here. Uh, let's talk about those Chicago Bears. Justin Fields making his first game back this week. Justin Fields is an interesting topic in Chicago. You know, what are the thoughts on Justin Fields for the rest of the year? Will Justin Fields get a chance to be the guy moving forward into next year? Or is he kind of, this is like his test run to see what he has to make before they try to go in a different direction? You know, I, you know I, I hope that Justin has a successful run here for these last seven games. And he plays like he did against the Washington Commanders. Because, you know, when he had good pass protection and he was really, you know, throwing the ball well to Cole Komet and D.J. Moore, and now Darnell Mooney has kind of burst into the scene a little bit more in the last couple weeks. And the thing about when you play against Justin Fields, it's almost hard to predict what you're going to get. Are you going to get the accurate passer um, that they did against the Washington Commanders, or are they going to get the dynamic athlete that, that the Bears were and the NFL was introduced to last year by Justin Fields? And then this is the first time that we've seen him kind of in midseason where he's missed a couple games. He's got to stand on the sideline, listen to Luke Getze call the play, and then watch Tyson Bajit run the offense. You know, a lot of times quarterback can improve um, during those types of times. But, um, you know, he's had, he's having a good week of practice and he feels good. And uh, But I, I do believe that um, in the history of my time being around the Bears, this will be the most hostile Detroit Lions uh, stadium that the Bears have ever walked into. So it's not going to be easy. Um, for Justin or anybody else who would play quarterback in that statement stadium. Talking to Bears radio analyst and 85 Super Bowl champion Tom Thayer. Uh, here's another question about Justin Fields before we go. How much blame is Justin and how much blame is two different coaches and three different offensive coordinators? Cause I think it's so easy to point the finger and say he's a Ohio State quarterback. It's on him. He's missing throws. He's not getting it done. He's had three years to kind of show what he has. But at the same time, you're talking two different head coaches. You're talking one that didn't draft him. You're talking offensive coordinators in different systems. And also, he didn't even have anything to work with on offense the first year. How much is Justin Fields and how much is the situation that he was drafted into? I, I think it's more the situation he was drafted into. You know, since he's been here, they've had 33 different offensive line combinations. Yeah. And you can't develop a young quarterback wow. when you have changes week in and week out. You have different types of centers. You have a knuckleball center exchange, and then you have a, side, a spiral 
uh, center snapper. So that there's difference there. And then you have, uh, you know, they allowed Justin to use his legs to be the biggest threat on offense last year. And then this year they tried to turn him into a pocket passer. True. I don't think they've ever actually decided on exactly what they think Justin's going to be. They, have, they need to allow Justin to be the dynamic athlete that plays quarterback rather than trying to be a backup quarterback that has dynamic athletic skills. Hey, Tom. Uh, it's Tom Azoy. Thanks for coming on with us. We always enjoy having you. I wanted to talk to you about this Lions team that you did bring up, and the Bears are coming into hostile territory. Yeah, Ford Field, the tickets have never been more expensive, never been more sold out. Usually Bear fans would take the stadium over. Packers fans would take the stadium over. That's a done deal. Have you ever seen a Lions team like this? What is your take on this year's Detroit Lions? You know, Dan Campbell reminds me a lot of Mike Ditka. And having a chance to play with Mike Ditka, the, you know, that personality, the next tight end, an ex-player that put heavy duty requirements on you, that captured the attention of the fan base, that made decisions like the I made last year, I mean last week, not by what the analytics says, about what he feels. And that's one thing I love about the guy. And I enjoyed playing for Ditka and the serious approach that he had to every everyday uh, team development. But I think the everyday team development and Dan Campbell's attitude has spilled up into the stands. And like I said, I've been a part of every Bears game since 1985 against the Bears in Detroit. And last year, you could see that stadium starting to gain that momentum where it could really be a weapon against anybody who goes in there. And I have, um, I'm super interested to see what it's like this Sunday because I expect it to be the loudest atmosphere the Bears have played in yet this year. That's a good take, Tom. You are going to hear it. It's going to be very loud. You and Jeff Joniak do a great job, by the way, on the play-by-play. -play. I wanted to talk to you about David Montgomery, a guy that you guys know very well. Now he's over here with the Lions. He's having a great year. A couple games he sat out with injuries, but we're so happy that he is here and to have him with Jameer Gibbs. That's a dynamic duo. I, you know, I love Dave Montgomery. I like his dedication to the sport. I like his willingness to recover quickly if he does have any type of injury setback. I think Dave Montgomery was underutilized here when he played for the Bears in terms of a pass-catching running back. You know what he's like with the ball into his hands after he takes a, a handoff. But to me, Dave Montgomery is, is, is a favorite of mine at the running back position that's ever come through the Bears system. You know, and I played with Walter Payton, and I broadcast oh. for Thomas Jones, and I saw Matt Forte's career. And David Montgomery is, is equally as impressive as any one of those guys, and I'm happy he's having success, and I've always been a big fan of his. I love the old school. Uh, the old school thought of processes. You know, the guys that get to come back faster from injury. The guys that you respect. That's my dad, man. He played for the Oilers, so I had that same type of energy. It's like the guys that come back, the guys that get over things. You really appreciate them on the team. Uh, you talk about the acquisition for the Detroit Lions, which was David Montgomery. I want to talk about two of the Bears, DJ Moore, and then more recently Montez Sweat. Talk about what those acquisitions have allowed the Bears to do on offense, and then Montez Sweat, obviously, on defense. So DJ Moore has been unbelievable. He's been a, a rock in the locker room. He's just been a real model citizen of what you want as a teammate. I think he deserves more targets per game. And uh, you would look at his toughness. You look at his willingness to make the difficult catches. You see his uh, difficulty to uh, tackle if there's only one defender on him. DJ Moore, I, I, I love what, um, I, what I've got to know from the guy from the start of training camp to where the Bears are right now. And he is one of Justin Fields' favorite targets. And like I said, I think he should get more reps. You know, Montez Sweat is, um, you know, so newly aboard that, you know, he got introduced the first week. The second week he had eight pressures. The Bears were able to get three sacks. Um, but, you know, this is the type of game – that he really has to, uh, you know, sh show the division that he's worthy of the big money he got and he's worthy of the trade. And if he can go out there and have some pressure against Jared Goff, 
I, I think it's only going to increase his value to this team. But the one thing of good about the Bears is if they're not only like to come here, they're rotating eight different defensive linemen. If he can play a fresh brand of football along with Yannick Ngakwe and Rasheem Green and Demarcus Walker and the rest of the crew they have aboard, I, I think that he can really help turn this team around because just with the, the better the defensive line play, the better T.J. Edwards is playing, Jack Sanborn, Tremaine Edmonds. So he's not only an asset at the line of scrimmage, he also lets the linebackers play a faster brand of football. Hey, Tom, as a good old offensive lineman yourself, what is your take on the Detroit Lions offensive line? I love them. I love them. Now, you know, I, listen, I, I think you guys have great offensive tackles in your interior is equally as, as impressive. Um, I, I think that they're uh, running, a, you know, an offensive line that they can, they can pass block, you know, but if, I think it's the real – you know, running game, running ability, offensive lines that go deep into the playoffs, challenge for the division crown, and then, you know, ultimately try to get to the Super Bowl. You know, you guys got good athletes. You have good size. You have uh, guys, obviously, that are developing through their, their time there in Detroit. And, you know, when just to repeat myself, I, I think Mike Ditka had a big influence on our offensive line. And I think when you have a head coach, that has a big influence on what he wants the offensive line to be. I think it plays an important role in their dedication to each other and then what they're ultimately able to do game in and game out at home or on the road. So uh, I, I know I'm saying a lot of great things about the Detroit Lions, <laughs> but heck, I, I envy where you guys I envy where you guys are at and, and where you're going. Hey, it's been a long time, Tom. So 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 long okay so we'll take the uh we'll take the compliments speaking of you guys you got two number one picks coming up do you think ryan poles and matt eberflus will be there to make those picks i i i do i i think ryan poles will um and i i like to see the way that he's evaluated talent since he's been here uh he's got a good eye um, no matter what the picking and to me the, uh, the best case scenario really for the Bears would be for the Bears to finish strong their offense and defensive statistics continue to improve finish the season with some wins and then be able to keep this group together I think if you dismantle this entire group no matter where your, your draft capital stands that you're setting yourself back again another two years so the best case scenario is the Bears to finish strong, keep this group aboard, and let Ryan Poles have his choice in in the draft this year, and to see where he can, um, you, you know, change you know change the the culture, the locker room, and the ability of the team. Hey Tom, we can't thank you enough, my friend, for spending some time know, with us here Tom. in Detroit. Uh, hopefully, you get to enjoy a little bit of the city during your visit, and uh, maybe we'll talk to you again, hopefully, down the road uh, later in the season. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. You guys, nice, Tom, Tom Thank Thayer. You. Take care of those dogs. 1985 <laughs> world yeah. champion with the Chicago it, Bears. It's always a cool thing when some certain guys just kind of announce the guys they play with, and they kind of say it casually because it's nothing casually about saying, you know, I was with uh, Walter Payton. Like, it's certain names you say, Maz, where it's like, damn, you play with yep. sweetness? Ain't like, if something? somebody just casually drops. Yeah, you know, I was on the uh, Cowboys team in 95 with Deion. You're like, wait, wait, wait. You just can't casually say you're on the team with Deion Sanders. So it's always cool. Hey, by the way, uh, breaking news in the NFL. There you go. I was going to get to that next. Way to go, Maz. Good job. Just say it now. We'll talk to you about the Thursday night game last night. You can say it. Go ahead. Joe Burrow out for the year, folks. Out for the year. We'll get to that next. Jim Brandstetter, top of the hour. But first, a message from the Hamlin Pub. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you ever wanted a bar where you are a regular? We have just the place for you. Head to one of Hamlin Pub's seven locations and experience where everyone is a regular. Whether you're enjoying the half-off pizza on Thursday or game day specials available during all Michigan and NFL games, Hamlin Pub is the place. Visit a location today and try it out and become a regular. 
Brace yourselves, Detroit. As the sun begins to set, two of Woodward Sports' brightest young stars will be taking the mic for a brand new show. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. The dog days in Detroit are over, and the boys are unleashed. Join in on the banter and hop on the bandwagon of the number one night show on the internet. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA Tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Awesome. Woodward Sports own Tom Mazaway and Sam Stick Day will be hosting our Lions postgame show after every Lions game all season long. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool-Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel. How would you like to win $100,000 cash Vegas getaway? Take your closest friends and live it up in the city that never sleeps. It's the Sinshine Energy. Drink it and live it. Purchase a 24-pack today and enter for your chance to win. You can do that at drinksintron.com slash Vegas and buy Sintron at your local Meyer store. It's Sintron, the healthier energy drink with great taste for the people who desire to look good, feel good, and be the best versions of themselves. Go to drinksintron.com slash Vegas. Woodward Sports Network. That was Chris Platty in with us. Kool Aid is here as well. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, and Tom Mazaway. As uh, Maz brought to you at the end of that last segment. Uh, by the way, we'll be joined by uh, Jim Brandstatter coming up uh, at the top of the hour in about seven minutes from now. Uh, but breaking news: uh, Joe Burrow out for the rest of the season. Um, my goodness, and. I think Cincinnati, you want to talk about trouble. Yep. I think Cincinnati should get in major trouble for keeping Joe Burrow off the injury report all week long. Yep. He clearly was wearing a wrist brace when he got off of that yep. bus yesterday. And you see all in the world we live in now with all the money being bet, DraftKings, FanDuel, Fantasy, all these implications, um, most notably last night online, uh, Dave Portnoy yep. put $100,000 on the Cincinnati Bengals. I guarantee you, if Joe Burrow was on the injury report, wouldn't he would bet. have never put $100,000. Uh, now, that's probably like you or I betting 50 bucks or 20 bucks mm -hmm. on that game. But nonetheless, 100 grand is 100 grand. Nobody in their right mind would bet that kind of money if Joe Burrow is on any injury report that week. Yeah, 100%. You know, you're know, you not going to bet that type of money because at the end of the day, you're going to bet on the Baltimore Ravens. That's be where you make that bet. So it's definitely not fair that the, the, uh, the Bengals withheld that information. I guess a lot of times, you know, in the league, you don't think it's much. You know, you don't think it's a big deal. But now that you are involved with other businesses, this is no longer just the NFL where you're like, ah, if we don't tell those guys he plays or not or he, you know, he got some extra eyes or he may have a strain. If we don't tell those guys, it's not that big of a deal if he still plays and then gets hurt in the game. But now that you have outside entities that you have partnered up with, like these betting sites, you got to give over all the information because I guarantee you, Ryan and mine, that is part of the deal that these betting sites struck with the NFL. We have to know yes. who is hurt, who is an injury protocol, who is talking, who is questionable, who is doubtful, who did practice. When you don't give that type of information up, you're breaking promises that you made to outside entities. Joe Burrow not only was hurt last night, but Mark Andrews hurt his ankle. He supposedly will be out for the year. That's One of the best today, tight ends yeah. in football for Baltimore. Lamar Jackson got hurt, came back in and finished the game. But those Thursday games, man, they're dangerous. And it just knocked out two of the biggest stars in the NFL. Yeah. 
knocked out two of the biggest stars. Can we talk about Lamar Jackson for two yeah. seconds? 34 20 to final last night, in case you missed it. Baltimore easily over the Bengals. Bengals are done. Right. And you can sit there and tell me about Joe Burrow got out for the game, and he was out for the game. But when you look at the Baltimore Ravens, when you look at every time Lamar, like every season, he's always without guys. Last night, he was without Devin Duvernay, Marlon Humphrey, Morgan Moses, Josh Simpson, Trenton Simpson, Ronald Stanley. <clears throat> two of these people are all pro. Four of those people are all, uh, pro bowlers. First drive of the game, Mark Andrews goes down, does not return. Lamar Jackson himself leaves the game, goes in the tent, then goes inside the locker room, then comes out, and he definitely returns to the game. They still found a way to win. At some point, you got to realize, like, Lamar Jackson, he's a winner. I saw a stat right in mind that said his – Aaron Rodgers' time in the, in the uh, NFC North, he was 71%. As bad as the Detroit Lions were, as bad as Chicago Bears were at the time, Minnesota probably split the average. 71% was Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson in the whole NFL since his time is 53-19 and 19 for a stunning 74%. The one thing he, we know he can do, he can win in the regular season. Lamar Jackson will be able to change his own narrative. Yeah. This is setting up so nicely for Lamar Jackson, yep. but he's got to do it now yep. because I agree. you're either going to be a one seed or a two seed, okay? And you should be able to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you know what, you yeah. should be able to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Cleveland Browns. Yep. Both, neither of those teams have a quarterback. Nope. Buffalo sucks. May not even make the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers isn't with the Jets. Miami is okay, but they haven't beaten a team with a winning record all year for as good as they've looked. You have one team that you wouldn't see until the AFC Championship yeah. game. Now, if you lose to the Chiefs in KC, I don't think anybody's going to bat an eye. But you have got to get there this year. He can certainly change his own narrative this season. I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely do. He has one playoff win to show for all the greatness, all the brilliance. But when we look at those and we break those games down, Maz, what has been the consistent with Lamar Jackson's teams in the playoff? All the injuries. And we just listed another one. Yeah, everybody has people that are injured. Who just got hurt last night for the Baltimore Ravens? Mark Andrews. <clears throat> you just said it. Yeah. One of the best well, tight ends. In fact, Statistically, he's probably been the best tight end over the last three years. He's out for the year. OBJ started to look good. OBJ got hurt. Devin Duvernay didn't play in the game because he was hurt already. So it's just going to be one of those things where, yes, he definitely has to prove. You definitely have to show, just like Joe Burrow, who goes to the Super Bowl in year two when he comes off an ACL injury. But, damn, isn't it the same thing with him every year? It's like no you get to, he's going to get to the playoffs, and then you're going to look at the injury reserves for him and guys that aren't there. Now he knows that. They got to find a way to win. Simply, no put. doubt, and that's why you get the contract and you pay yep. quarterbacks like I Patrick agree. Mahomes and I Lamar agree. Jackson and uh, Jalen Hurts, yep. and that's why you pay these guys fifty, fifty-two million dollars a year to overcome those to things. overcome those injuries. I agree. I agree. Um, guys, we're expected to be joined by Jim Brandstatter. We'll do that next, but first, a message from. Feldman. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your neighborhood. 18 locations. You definitely know they got one near you. Go to FeldmanAuto.com. Find out which one it is. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience. It's called the Feldman Event. Do yourself a favor. Take advantage. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, September 13th. Join now at any Metro Detroit location. Hurry, offer ends soon. Join Woodward Sports' own Jeff Iafrady, along with special WSN guests for the most anticipated Lions season in decades. Filled with different surprises and expert analysis. You're not going to want to miss out. Go to our Woodward Sports YouTube channel on Sundays and tune in live from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Gabby is a college student struggling to study for her big exam. Then she discovered Cintron, a healthy way for her to stay awake and focus. Jennifer frequently has chaotic days like this until she gets online, orders some Cintron, and finds her groove. April visited her local grocery store, purchased a case of Cintron, and entered to win the Cintron 100K Vegas giveaway. Pick up your case of Cintron today at any Meyer location or visit drinkcintron.com slash Vegas and enter for the 100K Vegas giveaway. 
Hey, gang, let me tell you about Outdoor Equipment Company, the official outdoor equipment provider of Woodward Sports. Michigan-grown, family-owned, bad boy mowers, tractors, steel handhelds, even weed whippers, Liberty Trailers, Generac Generators, Snow X Plows, and Salters. Outdoor Equipment Company has it all. You could buy it, you could rent it, 0% financing, delivered to your doorstep, OutdoorEquipCo.com, OutdoorEquipCo.com. Hey, welcome back. Hour number two of the program. Top story around here. On a Friday, you might expect it to be lions and bears, but my goodness, uh, Michigan-Maryland has become a big game as it is. Uh, Let's bring in the former voice of the Michigan Wolverines, longtime broadcaster of Michigan and the Lions, the great Jim Brandstatter. Jim, how you doing, my friend? So great to have you. Uh, here on Woodward Sports. There he is. Good to see Braylon Ryan. How are you guys doing? I'm doing real good. Doing fantastic. Under the circumstances. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Same thing. It's kind of like they uh, put a a pin in the balloon, didn't they? You know what? That's exactly... uh, Jim... Analogy right there, buddy. That's a great analogy. How do you feel today? How, How do you feel today... Personally, question one. And question two, what would your message be to Michigan fans right now? Well, I mean, I'm obviously, you know, I'm disappointed. Uh, I, I, the thing that, the thing that, the whole thing comes down to this. I was ready to go scorched earth on the Big Ten and the commissioner, and I still believe the commissioner acted uh, unwisely, and he acted, uh, in my opinion, uh, like he's a dictator and not uh, a guy that uh, has all of the best interests of the entire conference uh, in his mind when he did what he did last week. Totally and completely unfair, I thought. And I still think to some degree it was. But here's the deal. On Friday of last week, we were ready to be outraged. We were outraged. The letter from Ward Manuel, the president. And then in the last 72 hours, something changed and they capitulated uh, yesterday when they said, we'll accept all the penalties. What changed? Obviously, someone from within the the Schembechler Hall had information, did some things that nobody was aware of. If they were aware, they wouldn't have acted the way they did on Friday. And when they found out, they said, you know what, this is wrong. We got to go to them and say, let's just, we'll take our punishment and we'll move on. And, and that's what they did. I'm disappointed from within the program, though. You had an assistant coach at Chris Partridge who was, you know, relieved of his duties today, uh, somehow was involved. We don't know the extent of it, but it's disappointing. And maybe more than anything, from the optics standpoint nationwide, uh, you know, people look at this program as not the cleanest, which we all believe that it should be and it is. And, um, I, I, I feel very badly for this football team. This is a great football team with great talent, great individuals, and I think they're going to be tired and feathered a little bit when they shouldn't be. None of this is their fault. All they've done is done everything they could possibly do to get as good as they could possibly be. And I'm talking all the way back into, you know, December, January, February of this year when they're lifting weights. They didn't have anybody giving them information or signs from another team when they busted their ass, lifting weights, getting ready for this season. And they're proving it now, game to game to game. And I'm feeling bad for them right now. And the message to Michigan fans, look, don't get off this team. This is a great football team. And uh, if they allow us to play, if they can come up after this adversity, win the next two games and go to the Big Ten Championship and win that, That'd be an accomplishment uh, that I think we could all write home about. That's great stuff, Brandy. And and everything you said, I I completely agree with. Let me just go through that a little bit. I think that's where I am. I, I, I feel deflated a little bit, almost like with my tail between my legs, because of that bravado that they came out with over the last couple of weeks. Man, I was ready to go to war with them. Brandy, and to hear the news yesterday, it just makes me feel like I, I got my tail between my legs a little bit because I was sold a bill of goods, for lack of a better way to say it, that maybe we should have just 
taken a pause and said, "Hey, let's let this thing play out." And but well, you got President <laughs> AD and everybody. I mean, it's just it leaves me scratching my head. It does, and and here's the thing, though, and I think we can all look at this too. I am like you, feeling bad. I I think we were as fans, kind of given the wrong information, um, and and we're in the same boat, in my opinion, as Jim Harbaugh. And, and a lot of the guys in that staff and that Partridge must have in some way done it without anybody else knowing because even the Big Ten yesterday in their release, this is the quote, the conference has confirmed that it is not aware of any information suggesting Coach Harbaugh's involvement in the allegations. This was written after they knew uh, about the Partridge involvement. So from that standpoint, I think, to be quite frank, even though we yeah. haven't heard from him, Jim probably feels the same way we all do. Maybe even a little more so, because that's a guy he hired. Yeah, 100%. You know, nobody's feeling good. I mean, you're told we're proud Michigan alums, and I will continue to fight for Michigan. I will continue to lobby for that block game. I don't care if I'm wrong. At the end of the day, I know I went to the right institution. I will never back down off that stance. Uh, Brandy, with that being said, let's let's try to jump into these games for a second. Obviously, Maryland is tomorrow. We believe that Michigan has enough to beat Maryland. We saw Sharon Moore make a conscientious decision last week to run the ball because that was the best option in terms of going against those rushes and the linebacker, and it worked. So we think we're good. We know we're good against Maryland. But the Ohio State poses a different challenge. I don't believe Ohio State to be as good as they have been. I don't think you do either. But at the same time, it still is Ohio State. They still have their head coach. What's that game going to be like? Take us into the game next Saturday with no Jim Harbaugh on that sideline for these kids. Well, a couple of things. I have to, I think, figure a way. And I go back to the old uh, Bill Belichick method. Uh, Braylon, you played in the NFL. You know Belichick pretty well. Know what he does. It's like don't let their best player beat you. So somehow, some way, we're going to have to take Marvin Harrison and neutralize him. I don't know whether we'll be able to shut him out, but somehow make Marvin Harrison from Ohio State uh, a little neutralized. I don't know how you do it. Maybe you bang him off the line of scrimmage, double him, triple him, whatever. But they're going to have to figure out a way to do something like that. The other thing is that defensive line is going to have to stand up against the run. Yeah. I, I think yeah. if they can stop the run and, and neutralize Harrison, I, I think they got a great shot because personally, a, a pr the pressure on this young quarterback that Ohio State has, we've seen teams that have been able to get pressure on him, uh, has caused him some problems in the passing game. Uh, that would be the defensive effort. And offensively, you know, from, from my perspective against Ohio State, one, I think Michigan learned a lot last week when they saw the great edge rushers of Penn State. Yeah. They had some problems with them keeping them off J.J. McCarthy. So they're going to have to scheme ways to block Ohio State's great pass record. And and I think if they do that, I think J.J. will have that. But offensively, I think you'll see Michigan come up with every piece of their offense ready and rolling. It won't be just the running game. It'll be the passing game. It'll be the run action. It'll be rollout. It'll be move McCarthy. It'll be drop back. It'll be power run. It'll be three tight ends. It'll be spread and run from the spread with four of them with Corum and, and Donovan Edwards. Using Donovan Edwards outside as a receiver, a slot, you know, trying to find the mismatches. And I think against Ohio State, they'll basically pull out all the stops offensively and open up the playbook. There you go, Brandy. Restore my positivity about the game and uh, the game in uh, just over a week. Before I give you to your buddy, uh, Tom Masway over there, who's chomping at the bit to get his old riding buddy, uh, let me ask you a question just about <laughs> the, the entirety of the situation. Let's say this thing plays out. We beat Ohio State. We go to the Big Ten Championship. We win the Big Ten Championship. Tony Petiti has to hand the trophy to Jim Harbaugh, much like Roger Goodell had to hand the trophy to Tom Brady after he won Super Bowl MVP after being suspended the first three games of the year. You win the semifinals, and then you beat whoever makes it uh, in the national championship. What happens then? Jim Harbaugh gets back, wins the national championship. Then what happens in your estimation, Brandy? I don't even know if I'm phrasing that question right, but I figure you would have an answer for me. You know exactly what you mean. You're wondering... Well, Jim Harbaugh is still with the coach of Michigan. Hey, you <laughs> sly old dog, you. You can, you can couch it any way you want, Braylon. I, I got that one figured out because you're not the only one that thinks that. And uh, to be quite frank, I think that's in the back of Jim's mind. I mean, he's got to make the determination on his own. Do I want to put up with all this kind of scrutiny, the microscope, 
all the things that are BS. going to happen down the road? Uh, or do I want to get out of here, get my $10 million, and have to deal with 53 players and a general manager and draft them and try to win a Super Bowl like my brother did? That's, that's a question Jim's going to have to ask in his own mind, whether he wants to put up with what's going to happen. And yeah. you know it and I know it. They're not going to let up. They're going to, he's been branded. And uh, the people out there in, you know, national college football land that are uninformed and uh, pontificators without, <coughs> Paul much you know, yeah. without much substance. And there are a lot of those guys out there. Uh, but they can, you can say anything you want to say these days. And you can get away with it and you're not held accountable. And um, Jim probably has got to ask the question, do I want to put up with that? Or can I, I can go somewhere else and not have to deal with that? And that's going to be, I think, the big question he's going to have to ask himself. Yeah, that's real. Hey, Jim, I was going to ask you about uh, do you think he'll be here or go to the pros? We just had. I'm sorry, man. It's okay. No, we I'm had sorry. Tom Thayer on a few minutes ago, the Chicago Bears radio analyst. He played uh, with Jim Harbaugh back in his Bear days, and he talked about how different Jim is now than he was then. He was a more happy go lucky guy. Then, of course, he was younger. Now you got a lot more stuff on your plate. What I want to ask you is I personally don't believe that A, Jim wanted to sit out the first three games of this season on that suspension, self-imposed. And I don't believe that he wanted to have this happen to him as well. I think he wanted to be in court today, sticking up for himself and his team and his honor. And what, what happened yesterday to me is a travesty. I don't like it. I'd rather go down fighting and bring the other guys down with me. What's your opinion on uh, Jim Harbaugh? Do you think he bought into this? Or do you think he's sitting in the back saying, oh, you guys screwed me again? I think more than anything, Tommy, it's about the greater good. Uh, Jim, the one thing I know about Jim, and I think Braylon knows this because he probably talked to some of the players on this team, and the coaches too, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, and Ryan, you probably know it too. They love this guy. Yeah, you do. These players love Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh has a connection with them from the time that they were recruited. And, and, and that's not to be taken lightly. And as you go through this process, you can sit there and say, yeah, let's go all scorched earth and let's I'll go down with the ship kind of a thing. And I think you're probably right in his back of his mind, he want to do that. But the big picture was, what's that going to do to this team and these kids that, that we've nurtured? We've gotten them to the edge of, of a season that will be unforgettable. That could be a national championship. Do I want to put them in jeopardy and this effort in jeopardy and and for Jim with the relationship that he has with this team and those kids I, I would it doesn't surprise me that he took the advice backed off given the, the, the partridge thing and whatever that was we don't know exactly what it was but given the fact that there clearly was something there or partridge wouldn't have been uh, relieved of his duties Jim probably saw the greater good the greater bigger picture and said I want these kids to have this time and this moment. And, and by me going through this whole thing and taking everybody down with me, it does not benefit these kids. And that's the last thing Jim Harbaugh would want to do. But don't you think, Jim, and you're a former player, Raylan obviously a player, don't you think that this took the starch out of them? It took the starch out of us. These kids had a, hey, Who's in front of us next? Let's go. I asked Braylon last week, how bad do you want to play in this Penn State game? He's like, <laughs> give me the ball. Now, everyone's going to look at him and they're going to laugh at him. <laughs> ah, your coach got caught. Ah, hey, where's your sign stealer? Ah. I just think it takes the starch out of him, and I think it puts the Ohio State game in, in doubt for me. I, you know, I don't know how they're going to react. All I know is this. And I, and I, I know Jim has a great relationship with this team. And it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't surprise me at all, and I know we haven't heard any reports, if he didn't actually probably address the team right. about this whole thing. and said, look, guys, this is what's going to happen. And, and, and don't let it alter your focus on what your goal was. Uh, you'll remember Greg Blake Corum and J.J. McCarthy. These guys were young kids when, when they got beat by Georgia in my last game uh, down in Miami. And then they got beat again last year, and they all said, we're coming back to win the Natty. 
we're not coming back for stats. We're not coming back for this or, or the number of touchdowns or career yardage. We're coming back to win the Natty, and it's not just about you know the the. It's, they've got a greater goal, I think, and and I think that they can push this aside. Say, you know what? This is stuff that is noise on the outside. What was our goal in the begin beginning of the season? Always was to win the national championship. Nothing has changed. We still have that ability. We just have to go out and take care of business. I think that's the attitude that they're veteran group. They're not young guys. That they have a prize that they've been working for for the last three years. Uh, the starch, yes, may have been taken out of them a little bit. I think that this week in Maryland on the road will be difficult, but I think they'll be able to win that game, and it's vital that they do. Maryland is a good team now. Yeah. Uh, they've had troubles of late, but we have to win that game, and I think the kids can get that done. And then I think Ohio State will be epic. I, I think at that point, all the cards are on everybody's table. Yeah. Everybody knows what's out there, and every kid on that Michigan team – I think is going to be sky high because that goal is within their reach to get to that national championship playoff. Well, hopefully after uh, a Michigan win over Ohio State, Jim, we'll have you back and talk about those college football playoffs and a Big Ten championship and all that great stuff. Th thanks so much, Jim. It's so great to hear oh, your voice. Absolutely. I'll tell you, as a hey, Michigan Bill, fan, Jamie one day, absolutely. Jim the next. Listen, as a Man, Michigan is it. As a Michigan you, fan, Jim, it is still hard not to hear your voice on a Michigan yep, broadcast. True. Amen. But <laughs> and Lions. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm about it. I, I learned it. <laughs> How about those Lions, like, Jim? Know. It sounds so good. It sounds so much different than what we're hearing now. That's right. The Lions are for real. Absolutely. I love Dan Campbell, but I love the fact that they've got an offensive line that's you can really depend on. Passing and running. That's the difference. This team's got that. Amen. Says an offensive lineman himself. Not bad. <laughs> I wanted to put Jim on the spot, but I won't Thanks, do it. Jim. Appreciate it, my friend. Hey, Brandy. Happy Thanks, Thanksgiving right. to you and Robbie and the yep. rest of the family. Take Thank you holidays. so much. Thanks, Thanks, Abs Thanks, absolutely. Uh, guys, we're going to get a, a break. I am way over, but that's okay. Uh, we'll take a break. Come right back. Uh, we got to do our bets. We got to do a uh, fill in the blank Friday. Lots to get to on a Friday, but first, a message from Swiss. Swiss Insurance. Now, do you have football on the brain fall ushers in college and professional football and this year it is going to be awesome uh, fall is the perfect time to shop your limit your home and studio or and auto insurance sorry about that shop it like a pro with swiss insurance they cover woodward sports network and they should be covering you too ask for mark at swiss insurance today that's swissins.com or you can give them a call at 248 800 4177. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime. Deal ends Wednesday, September 13th. Join now at any Metro Detroit location. Hurry, offer ends soon. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Now, coming to Woodward Sports, Woodward and Main Street, the Woodward Sports Network Detroit Lions Show. Let's go! Catch Gabrielle D. Phillips, Matt Broder, and Terry Foster for all the latest news on your Detroit Lions every week. Only on the Woodward Sports Network YouTube channel and woodwardsports.com. 
to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Awesome. Join Woodward Sports and Lawn Drink as we present Lions VIP Tailgate at Shed 5 Eastern Market. It goes down. Get your tickets today at BullseyeEventGroup.com. That's BullseyeEventGroup.com. You come down, it goes from 930 to 1. And that means it does end as soon as the game starts. They want to get you to the game. They want to get you to other tailgates. But in that time period, it is the best one. Come on down and hang out with Woodward Sports. You never know who you might see at the tailgate. It's Lions, VIP tailgate, bullseyeeventgroup.com. And hey, gang, want to tell you about Guardian Alarm as well. They're your local security experts and have been for over 90 years. When you see this black and yellow sign out in front of your house, it tells the bad guys one thing. Stay out. Whether you are at home or on the road, they're 24-7 professional monitoring, customized solutions from real experts, and technology backed by people means you are backed by the best. Call this number right here, 1-800. Stay out. Out. That number again, 1 800. Stay out. Call them today. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you. And Stay while you're out. at it, go buy a new car at buy Les Stanford car. Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. That's right. Les Stanford has expanded into Ferndale with Ooh. Les Stanford. Buick GMC. They offer the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. Located in Ferndale yep. on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. And if you're looking for a Chevy or a Cadillac, Les Stanford in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You can find the brand you want under one umbrella. LesStanford.com. LesStanford.com. Fine. New road. Find them. Oh, yeah. All right, Thank gang. You. It oh, is yeah. Friday. Let me lay out the rest of the day for you. We're going to do fill in the blank Friday now. We'll do picks next, and then we'll close it out. Fair enough to you guys? Around the NFL, sure. Absolutely. Uh, we are rocking and rolling on a Friday. Uh, if you're just tuning into the show, if you're just tuning in live, we did address the Michigan situation. Uh, ourselves in the first half hour of the show, first 30 minutes of the show. We talked to Tom Thayer, Chicago Bears Radio Network. We talked to him about Lions and Bears. And if Harbaugh is a candidate in Chicago, and then, of course, Brandy at the top of the hour here. Uh, but let's get to it, guys. How about a little beat there from Kool-Aid? Uh, and uh, we'll do get fill in the blank Friday. Let's, let's, do it. Going in let's do it, right? right. Braylon, we'll start with you. Ready? I'm the ready. defense, the Lions defense, will blank on Sunday. Perform. I think they perform. Actually, I know they perform. You know, their backs are against the wall. We've seen a couple times this uh, season where they haven't performed at their optimum level, and they always respond in kind the very next game. And I think this is a good game against an offense that's iffy. I mean, hey, you got DJ Moore sometimes can make plays, sometimes he doesn't. I think they perform. Aiden Hutchinson is tired of the noise. The defensive line is tired of the noise. And I think the secondary has some up their sleeves, so I think they perform this Sunday. Tom Mazaway, the Lions defense will blank on Sunday. We'll give up half the points they gave up to the LA Chargers. Gave up 38 to the Chargers. They're going to give up 19 or less points, mainly 17 to the Chicago Bears, and they're going to win this game by two touchdowns. Did you come? Let me get the chat involved. Big M says <laughs> dominate. Justin oh, says no. score a touchdown. Mm. Uh, Rhinist says dominate. I like score I a touchdown. I am going to say the Lions defense will dominate on Sunday. That is right. They know the calls. They know where they are. They know uh, all the criticism on Aaron Glenn. They're going to want to perform for that guy, and I expect the Lions defense to dominate. I'm calling two interceptions. Two, well, two turnovers. Okay. Two turnovers for the Detroit Lions defense. I like Sounds it. Sounds good. Let's I go like to the it. offensive side of the football. He's been a big topic, and I think the biggest uh, name for the Lions offense this week, he is David Montgomery. David Montgomery, Brett Braylon, will score blank 
touchdowns versus the Bears. David Montgomery will score blank touchdowns versus the Bears. Tom Asaway told us yesterday, and I agree with him, he said three touchdowns. He's done that already this season, but the added, the added caveat is what you saw last week. He can punch one in from 75 balls, so you got a guy that can go 75 in, and the Lions stay in the red zone. I mean, they're going to feed him the ball in the red zone, not to mention he does have the ability to uh, to take it long. So, uh, balls on that one and three touchdowns. Uh, Tom Mazaway, David Montgomery yep. will score blank pause touchdowns versus the Bears. Braylon told you. Braylon told you. Three touchdowns, 160 yards total Ooh, offense. Tom going. Right. I see you, Tom. I got David Montgomery scoring two touchdowns versus the Bears. Why are you uh, pausing me, by the way? Pause. Uh, <laughs> David Montgomery will score two touchdowns versus the Bears. And I say he goes long pause for 120 yards. I love it. I, love I don't it. even I know what it. it means, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> People seem to like it. Though. Absolutely. I gotta love it. Got to appease the man. Uh, AC <laughs> in the chat says three. Big M, two. Hey, guys. Ten touchdowns. Uh, just a fan <laughs> says two touchdowns. Andrew, two. AC, ten. She Darryl, ten touchdowns last uh, week. says two as well. Cool uh, likes to pause a oh, lot. Yeah, he absolutely. Does. Uh, the NFL Coach game Drew. you are looking forward to the most this weekend, Tom Mazaway, is... I'm looking at this. Yeah. The Vikings and the Broncos. Ooh, okay. The so Vikings at the Broncos. Said no one ever. Hopefully it's going to be snowy in Denver. The Minnesota Vikings, the Purple Gang, all they do is play one-score games. They've won five in a row. The Broncos have won three in a row. I love seeing Russell Wilson back to his, not his old self, but he's got a remnant. He's reminiscing of his old self right now. I like what Sean Payton's doing with the Broncos. That's going to be a terrific game. If you would have asked me yesterday, I would have said Thursday Night Football would have been the game of the week. You're yep. talking Joe Burrow versus Lamar Jackson, but that game's over, and we know what happened in that one. It's got to be the Super Bowl repeat. It's got to be Monday night. It's got to be the Eagles. It's got to be the, the – and I feel like Mass threw me – he let me have this because it's definitely game week, so I appreciate you, Mass. You it, but it's buddy. the Eagles. It's KC. KC or the Eagles are – neither one of them are the team they were last year. The Eagles, they're not as dominant on defense. The Kansas City Chiefs, they're not as dominant on offense. So it's going to be interesting to see the number one team in the – well, yeah, number one team in the NFC versus the number one team in the AFC. Who's going to get that W? No doubt. I, obviously, I, I agree with you. I think that's the yeah. game of the week. But just – it. In the order to be different, I'm going to go with a like little bit it. of a curveball here. I'm going to say the Raiders and the Dolphins. The Raiders are 5-5 five and five and are playing inspired ball under their new interim head coach, Antonio Pierce. They are the largest dog on the board this week. Um, and I just think there's something going on with the Raiders right now. That's a sneaky upset pick for me. Uh, the Raiders to go into Miami yeah. as a 13-point dog, not only That's... cover but win that football game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that intrigues me the most this weekend. I'm glad you don't bet. That's I was. That's a hell of a pick by you. So I, I, I applaud your effort on that. A sneaky game, man, and it's not because I play for this team. Sneaky game is that New York Jets game against the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills and Jets still hanging around in playoff contention. Jets maybe not so much, but the games in Buffalo We're only two out. And I want to see. If the Jets beat the Buffalo Bills, Sean McDermott has to get fired yeah. after that game. Ryan, would that be safe to say if the Jets with Zach Wilson and the show that that has been this year, if they beat Sean McDermott at home as Buffalo was flailing and hanging on for dear life to the playoffs and even resemblance of still being a decent team, you got to fire Sean McDermott after that. I mean, you know, I don't know who's on their staff that could take over. Um, you know, uh, because they just fired their offensive coordinator yeah. last week. Well, he wasn't to go. So who's who was the D coordinator? It's, I don't still, even it's know. not even Leslie Frazier. Uh, anymore, yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't think of it. I just think that's tough. I just think it's tough. Whoever he is, he stinks. I just think it's, it's 100%, man. You're absolutely yeah. correct. I just think it's tough to lose to this particular um, Zach oh, Wilson-led Jets two times. The worst. Two times. So I'm like. He has to get fired. That's one of our games coming up, so Man. don't give don't give your no prediction doubt. yet. All right. All right, guys, two more. Uh, Michigan faces Maryland on Saturday. Oh, J yeah. J.J. McCarthy will throw for blank touchdown. 60 yards? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Hopefully more than that. I'll say two. You know, I, I want I want to go all in and say this is going to be the game and where they really stick it to Maryland and say F you, Big Ten, and blah, blah, blah. But you have to be realistic, and I think they're going to run the ball a lot. That is their identity, much like the Lions. But I think J.J. has two touchdowns in this game. Mavs. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna say three. Uh, maybe he runs one in and throws for two. But I think three touchdowns. I think they'll handle Maryland. How many will he throw for? 
He's, uh, he's going to throw for two, and he's going to run for one. Yes, there we go. All right? Two and one. <laughs> they should handle Maryland. I really, the game doesn't excite me. You know, like I said, it is what it is. We'll see you next Saturday. Yeah. I'm going to go with four. Ooh. I think this is one of those games where Michigan is going to score north of 50 points. They haven't thrown a ball in two and a half quarters. Thank you. I understand the statistics. Yeah. The last pass they threw technically was the seven-minute mark yeah. or so of the second two quarter last quarters. week. But yeah. I'm going to go with Michigan scores 50 or more points, and wow. J.J. throws for four touchdowns. You're drinking that Kool-Aid. I feel like this is a 59-21 to 21 game. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like it. That's what I'm going with. Okay, buddy. That's I what like I'm it. going with. Uh, last question here, everybody. Yep, I'm ready for it, too. The top 10 college football team that will lose this weekend is... Now, let me run it down for you. Please and thank you. Michigan at Maryland. Alabama hosts Chattanooga. Louisville on the road at Miami. Uh, you've got... Uh, no chance in hell. That's what you Georgia got. on the road at Tennessee. That's you, one versus 18. You've got Ohio State hosting Minnesota. Oregon at Arizona State. Uh, Washington at Oregon. Florida, that's the, the Washington at, at Oregon, Oregon State. State. Yes. That's the cake. Are the, that's the tough one. And Texas at Iowa State. Correct. I'm going with two losses. Okay. And I'm going with the last two teams you said. I think uh, Oregon will lose to DJ Uwe. Ungalele. Washington will lose. I mean, Washington saying. will lose to DJ Uy, Ungalele, and Oregon State. And I think Texas is going to lose as well. So give me two. Texas and Washington. I'll one-up you and go with three. Ooh. I think that Iowa State beats Texas. That's one. I agree. I think that Oregon State beats Washington. Agree. And I think that Miami is going to beat Louisville. Yeah, crystal ball is like he's he, he's on his last leg in Miami. That's why I can't pick Miami, but I hope so for for the sake of being fun. But you ready? Yep. Zero. N- not a bad guess. There will be no upsets this mm. weekend. None of the top ten teams, and we'll see you next week. Well, you're no fun. I'm just telling you. You stink. Very. I don't good. know where you're getting three from. Three. I just told you three. I know. I got Oregon you. State. Yeah. Iowa State. That's like a one-point game. Is that, really, is that really a big upset? No, I didn't say upset. I said which top right. 10 team will lose. My bad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to downplay your, your, hey, look, 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 your look, look, look. Everybody else is against us right now. We can't fight each other, okay? You guys get some makeup. Zero. <laughs> well, go screw yourself. Zero. Ah, it's off the rails. It's off the rails. <laughs> All right, Bess. I love you. Love you uh, guys, uh, picks next. But first, the message from Big Boy. All right, guys. Winner is always better with comfort foods from Big Boy. You know it. You want to try that veal parmesan or the new Southern Comfort Chicken Bowl. You got to try them all. You start your day off with breakfast, the stuffed potato pancakes, and the lumberjack at Santa Fe Garden. Yeah, they're delicious. Ken Cal loves them as well. The uh, Santa Fe Garden and the Lumberjack uh, uh, the eggs, you got me all thrown off now. The omelets, they're delicious as well as the brand new apple pie hotcakes. You got to try those. Everyone had the pumpkin pancakes. Now you got the apple pie hotcakes. Top it all off with the new gingerbread shake from everywhere you want to go. Your local big boy. Now, coming to Woodward Sports. Woodward and me. Street, the Woodward Sports Network Detroit Lions show. Let's go! Catch Gabrielle D. Phillips, Matt Broder, and Terry Foster for all the latest news on your Detroit Lions every week. Only on the Woodward Sports Network YouTube channel and WoodwardSports.com. Calling all landscapers. This is Darren McCarty. I'm at Outdoor Equipment Co. How would you like to landscape like a legend? How about a bad boy zero turn? And even a chainsaw! And even a weed whipper! Whether you landscape for your job or landscape for fun, get all your equipment from Outdoor Equipment Co., the official equipment provider of Woodward Sports. Michigan grown, family owned. OutdoorEquipCo.com at work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. 
featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Hey gang, I want to tell you about the Woodward Sports Network merchandise at woodwardsports.com. All you got to do is click the shop tab. Such great apparel, ultimate swag. You got to check this out. Uh, hoodies, tees, hats, everything in between. All seasons and great gift ideas. Let me tell you, I'm very particular about what I wear. And let me tell you, this is, this is very comfortable, very affordable. So go there right now, Woodward Sports Network. Com, woodwardsports.com click on that shop tab and uh, get your holiday gifts get something for yourself too alright there you go that's all good let's do it alright Maz here we go big guy give our stats out let's first go. Mike. okay here we go we're doing the picks now the stats let me tell you the stats we got your stats exit below um I am well let me start with Maz Maz 39 27 and 4 12 games above 500 then you've got Braylon at 32, 30, excuse me, 34, 32, and 4. And I'm bringing up the rear. 30, 36, and 4. Just an absolutely You had two bad weeks. Pause. Just an absolutely treacherous, treacherous You know what they call that? Situation. Garbage. Garbage. That's what they call that. Okay. Let's start you off. Here we go. We got seven games a week, guys. Game number one, it is the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets at Orchard Park against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are a full touchdown and extra point favorite, Ryan. This is an easy one for me. I don't think the Bills should be a seven-point favorite against anybody. I'm going with the Jets. All right, write it down. 100%. I mean, the one thing the Jets have done all year is defense. Yeah. Defense has been their staple. I mean, you look at all the good quarterbacks, they've all struggled against the Jets' defense. Give me the Jets as well on the points. Right, remind me again. How many touchdowns does Zach Wilson have? Uh, he's got zero in the last 11 oh. quarters. Okay, I just wanted to check on that. How many has he got, like, in the last five games? Like, uh, I think one? he's got three. One, two, three, maybe? All right, give me the Bills to punch the Jets in the face, end their season, and put them uh, start them thinking about next year. Aaron Rodgers, don't bother coming back. Uh, this, this baby is uh, all over. I hate to say it. Steelers at the Browns. Browns are going with P.J. Walker. At the, excuse me, Dorian. Finney Smith, right? No. Uh, Dorian Thompson, right? Dorian yeah, Thompson. Yeah, Thompson. Right. DTR. Dorian Finney Smith is a basketball yeah, player for the like, Mavericks. The Browns have DTR. <laughs> I, I didn't look your Nets way. now. Yeah. There you go. DTR, a quarterback for the Browns. They are home. Coming off a big win against Baltimore. No Deshaun Watson. Steelers are winning ugly. They are the ugliest team in the NFL. But they've won four in a row. Go figure. The they Browns did. are a one-point home underdog. There's your answer right there. The Steelers win ugly games. This will be an ugly game. I don't believe in the quarterback for the Browns. I believe in the fourth quarter for the Steelers. Give me the Steelers. The lock of the week for me. I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I think they're a better team without Deshaun Watson. Cleveland lock of the weekend. They're not a better team without Deshaun yeah, Watson. Yeah, you haven't watched It's not even close. Okay. I'm just telling you that. You, okay. The Browns might win, but they're a far worse team okay. without the Sean. He fine. was just coming into his own. Just coming into his own. <laughs> Troll. Give me the Browns. <laughs> I hate the Steelers. You said all that they the disgust Browns. me. What did you take, Ray? I said the Steelers. The Steelers disgust me. Give me the they Browns. They disgust me. They just, this is a gross the, game. The Steelers' colors disgust me less. Ugh, the hell with that game. Yeah. Buccaneers at the 49ers. Biggest spread of the weekend. One San Francisco, 11 and a half point favorites at home. Who wants to go first? I'll go. This it's easy. Go ahead. Different, different ball club with uh, Debo Samuel. This is, uh, this is a three touchdown win for the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. I'll go next. I'll take the 49ers as well. Bray, you said it. They're probably the best team in the NFL uh, right now if they stay together like this. Uh, you don't want to go to San Francisco or Santa Clara. 
to play this team. Give me the Niners. Give me the Bucks on the spread, man. I'm, you know, Baker Mayfield is trying to show us a little something. Mike yeah. Evans is finding himself again. Chris, I don't know why I gave you Chris Godwin, but that was. He hasn't done anything in the last three weeks. Good, because he right. was killing me after that game. Boy. But then the running back, uh, Rashad White. He's done yeah. some good things too. I, you know, I think they lose by ten, but that's not eleven and a half. Okay, Bucks. I like that. Bucks, man, he's getting smarter. This guy. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's I go to uh, let's go to this one. The Texans, one of the hottest teams in the NFL. They are home. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals coming off a big win last week. The Cardinals at the Texans. Texans a four and a half point favorite. Since I haven't gone first yet, I'll be glad to go first here. I'm gonna. I, how do I bet against the Texans? I can't bet against them. Right. Give me. Give me Houston. Uh, I'll take. The, is there some? Can we just is, say is this some, is a no play in like real life? Houston Texans. This is a no play. I put this in because of Kyler Murray yeah. versus uh, CJ Stroud. Yeah, this it's, is a, it's a no good, play. It's a good setup. Right. Because he makes you think like you know, is there some magic left for Kyler Murray? Can he go out there and beat the new rookie? Nah, I'm going with uh, CJ Stroud, Tank Dell, and Nico Collins. I'll go with Arizona just to try to pick up a game on you okay, guys. Okay. That's the only reason. Fair I have, enough. I have no, I have no uh, feel for that game. Matt Prater's hot. In the yeah. words of Ryan Romani, I got the lock of the week. Uh oh. I'm waiting for you. I got the lock of the week. The Seahawks at the Rams. The Rams are this a one. home underdog. Something stinks. Rams, getting this. one. Rams on the money line. Yeah. I'm taking Rams on the money line. Something stinks. Matt Coming off the bye. Matt Stafford is back. They're off a of bye week. I'm taking them on the money line. The Seahawks have not been the same Seahawks in the last three weeks. They're turning the ball over at an exponential rate. They can't score in the red zone. They're 30th and they're 31st on third down conversions. What happened to Geno Smith? Yeah. What happened to K-9? What happened to Zach Charbonnet? Give me the Rams on the money line. Beautiful. I'm going to go with the Rams, too, because of the number. I'm so impressed by you, Braylon. For you, I appreciate it. That goes right. a long way, man. You I didn't even know hard. what the hell a favorite or underdog I, was when we first not. had you a couple of years ago. Now you're freaking doping couple games out. On MGM. You're calling you you call the money line. Sorry, right? I didn't mean to no, you're fine. I, 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 would, I would go with the Rams just because of the number. I'd play the number on that one. Yeah. Something stinks about that. You've got a 6-3 and three team I know. that looks like a playoff team that is a playoff team, that's a guaranteed playoff team, going up against a team that's 3-6 and six and seemingly broken. Uh, and it's a one – no, that's Rams all day. Yep. I think you might be right about lock of the week. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate Ugh. that. Screw you guys. I'll take the Seahawks. Good. There you go. It's not Give me bad. the Seahawks. We got to get a balance. I still, I still dig what you said. That's great. Honestly. Matt, that's great analysis. All right. That's all I, I got to tell you. Thank you. All right. The Vikings at the Broncos. Broncos are a two and a half easy. point favorite. I told you. They've won three week. in a row. Vikings have won five in a row. Who wants to go first? I'll go. This is an easy week. Go ahead. Denver. De- Denver is going to crush the Vikings. Crush? They play all the way players. One score crush games. Crush the Vikings. Okay. I think the, I think the Cinderella tell is over. I think the Cinderella tell is over. For who? They're both Cinderella. <laughs> no, they're not, no, 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 no. The Broncos aren't Cinderella. The Broncos are like, trying to make something of a season. Minnesota's the sweethearts, Josh Dobbs, astrophysicists and all that. Didn't know his team name. They're the Cinderella. Guess what? It'll be 12 o'clock midnight. This coming Sunday. I'm going with the Broncos. <laughs> That's good, guys. You know who I'm taking. Minnesota. Damn right. <laughs> you say you love the Vikings. I do. do, do you love the NFC North. I That's do. what it is. I love like, that oh, division. This is good. I love my division. Pick the the, pick the this Bears are year. the only team that don't get a ton of love by yep. Mass. Yep. He loves the NFC North. I do. 100%. How you bet against, how you bet against Josh Dobbs? Just like, I did, just like I just did. <laughs> I just did. Hey, Broncos country. All Let's right. Ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. And the last game of the day, you know it. It's our beloved Honolulu Blue and Silver, sometimes with black accent. Detroit Lions hosting the Chicago Bears. Spread started at nine. It's down to seven and a half now. Ford Field is going to be unbelievable. Who wants to go first? I'll go. I'll be happy to go first. Give me the Lions. Lay the points. I Lay the wood. It, 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 like Lions in a major blow. What's the over under in this game? I'd have to look it up. I can't do that in a second. Hold on. Let me 42 see. Hold on. Uh, 47 a, and a half. Okay. Lion, can I give you a bonus play? Yeah, sure. Lions in the over. Lions score 40 by themselves. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I, just, I got 31 17. Be I, over. 
I thought it was going to be one of those games where like it's kind of ugly at first, and then eventually the Lions pull away and they make the spread late. I think they might do a number on him. You know, Justin Fields hasn't played. It's going to be loud. I'm seeing some quarterbacks. For, I'm seeing some center quarterback exchange issues. I'm seeing some fumbles between him. Hero ball like Josh Allen. Two interceptions, Ryan. You called it already. Mm-hmm. Stick with two. A bunch of sacks. Sack strip fumble. How about Hutch? Like that sack strip fumble. Yeah. Talking about your guy Hutch. This is going to get ugly. I can see this to the tune of 30 plus in the first half of the Lions. There you go. Detroit clean sweep. That's the only one we've got a clean sweep on. Uh, looks pretty good. You got any bonus plays? Uh, what about Michigan minus 19 tomorrow? Is that spread still 19? Still 19. How about, Minis- how about uh, Michigan, Michigan State, Indiana? Who? Mich- Michigan covers. <laughs> Who'd you say? I said, how about Michigan State, Indiana? Indiana. What's the, what's the over on that, 20? Like 40, I think. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Last week was 27. <laughs> Iowa against Hold Rutgers. On. Cover. Hold and it on. went under. It's so weird. Like, you go to ESPN.com, and they have the ESPN bet, bet number. Now. That's what it you is. You know what I mean? It's, un- it's no like, more Sports Nation. You, you, you just, know how ESPN Sports oh, yeah. Nation? What is they that? Have, now it is now, and it's ESPN bet. Oh, wow. Darren Ravel went on, and he said, I give this two years before it fails. Just it totally implodes. Two years. Yeah, it's not a sports book. It's it's really look look this all this betting stuff. I gotta tell you, like you can't watch a game anymore and not see a number. Of course, it's on the screen all the time. It's like it's incredible. Like absolutely. Oh my correct. god, be careful if you're out there betting, guys. Seriously, yeah, watch, we're watch we're doing kids. it for entertainment. Yeah. I don't play. I write it down on this list. You know, this is just fun and. Games. I'll take Maryland in the points. I'll take Michigan by fifty. I'll, t- I'll take Michigan. Yeah, I- I'll take Mich- I'll take Michigan by twenty six. Alternate spread: Michigan minus twenty eight. Maryland plus fourteen. <laughs> That's good it's stuff, guys. Good. We'll be back. We'll wrap it up next. We'll go around the NFL. Uh, Red Wings in action too. But first, a message from Fairway Packing Company. For over sixty years, Fairway Packing Company has provided Michigan's finest hotels, casinos, and restaurants with prime beef, wagyu beef. In dry aged beef. You can experience the fairway difference for yourself today. This is the steak shop in Gross Point Woods on Mac Avenue for grab and go steaks. You can order online if you can't make it in person. Fairwaypacking.com. Fairwaypacking.com. Source cut age packed to perfection. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA Tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Brace yourselves, Detroit. As the sun begins to set, two of Woodward Sports' brightest young stars will be taking the mic for a brand new show. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. The dog days in Detroit are over, and the boys are unleashed. Join in on the banter and hop on the bandwagon of the number one night show on the internet. Tune into the Woodward Sports YouTube channel every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. own Tom Mazaway and Sam Stick Day will be hosting our Lions postgame show after every Lions game all season long. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool-Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel. 
Hey gang, come to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience and register to win a trip of your dreams and all expenses paid sweet for the 2024 NCAA Tournament. That's right, no expenses spared for you and five of your best buds. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. You can walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. All right, Tom Hazaway, uh, as we get set to wrap it up here this week, we'll send it over to you for a little NFL. All right, we just talked about the Lions and the Bears, and we talked about a guy that's going against his brother, right? Isn't, aren't the St. Brown brothers playing against each other? Won't be the only ones. <laughs> that's right. The Sewell brothers. Sewell that's brothers. right. And there's the three. There's another one. Really? It's another set of brothers. This will be the first time in... It's the first time in 40 years that three sets dead. of brothers are playing in the game. I got to figure out who the third set is. But there are three sets okay. in this game. I'm on Ross St. Brown and Equiminius, uh, Noah and Panay, and there's one more. Mm. Got to look that up. We will. Out. Oh, of course. The Aquarius. The there you go. There you go. We had our own brothers here. We didn't even realize. Romeo and Julian. Romeo and Julian. Oh, did they name those they kids after Romeo together. and That's Julian? why. Yeah. Anyway, the best receiver on the Lions right now, obviously, our number one guy, our MVP is Amon Ross St. Brown. While the Lion media got a hold of him yesterday, Eric Woodyard on the uh, tweet here, we give him credit for this on ESPN, covering the Lions as well. And uh, they basically said, hey, how do you stay so consistent, and then how do you play through your injuries? Like you said, consistency is the biggest thing, and that's, I think, one of the hardest things in this league is to be consistent. Um, and that's really what I pride myself on is trying to be consistent. So, um, you know, trying to do it every week is, is tough. It's hard. Um, but, you know, I think I, I put the work in every week um, to try to go out there and do it, to give my best, to give myself the best chance to do it and to go perform. And, you know, every week it might not be 100 yards. It might not be two touchdowns, whatever it is. But if I can impact the game in any way, whether that's run block, run blocking, um, you know, making a block down the field after, you know, say Sam catches a, a third and five, he catches it short. I make a block, just help him get that first down. Whatever it is, if I can impact the game, um, help this team win, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, the numbers, the stats, all that, I mean, it's nice, but those will come, you know, with, with hard work and, and just, you know, keep doing your job every day. I think it'll come, but for me, it's just being consistent as a player. Have you, learned, have you learned anything about yourself, I would say, with this, like pushing through injuries, fighting through the mental side? What have you learned about yourself just as a football player doing that on this level? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, every player at this point in the season is kind of going through something. Um, you know, either you might not be injured, but I would say almost 100% of players are hurt. They got something going on. You might not hear about it because, you know, they don't tell anyone. But most players, you know, they're going through a little injury, a little something here and there. But you just got to push through every week, uh, find a way to, you know, maybe come in a little earlier, get some treatment, whatever it is, get some more sleep um, and and figure out a way to be, to be ready on Sunday. That's the biggest thing. You might not feel good during the week, but... On Sunday, you better be ready. You, you know, just a quick note on why he's able to be so good in these games. One, he puts in the work. Two, obviously, he watches the film. He keeps himself in shape. We know all that. He stays engaged in the games. Like, guys that have success throughout the quarter of 60 minutes, four quarters, he stays engaged. He's in the running game. He's in the passing game. He's in talking to defense. He's working things out on the sideline with fellow wide receivers, the offensive line. He never stops being engaged in the game. When you stay engaged, you're ready. Like, you're legitimately going out there. You're making plays. You're kicking. You know your route depth. You know the coverages. You can read it before it happens. When you stay engaged, you have the kind mm -hmm. of success that I'm on Ron St. Brown is having. And he's – Definitely put itself in a situation to be one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. No doubt. No doubt this particular year. Hey, uh, the, the crew from the Detroit Lions media also got together with Aaron Glenn, had his press conference yesterday, and someone asked him about Kirby Joseph, how he started slow. They asked him, you know, he hasn't made any interceptions, but now Aaron Glenn's like, well, Kirby is just getting going with those. He's here to do a lot more than that, you know, so that's just a part of his game that he's really good at. Um, and listen, sometimes those things take time. And um, it just clicks. And that's, you know, you guys asked me that question, I think, a couple of weeks ago about why he hasn't gotten them. Now he's getting them. And now it's, it's how this game is. And and usually when they happen like that, they do come in bunches. All right. And um, I'm hoping that his bunches is continuing um, as we go into this next, this next game. All right. Okay. It's year two. 
A lot of times in year two, you know, last year Kirby Joseph had one role. He was operating in a secondary where it wasn't that good. Like they were kind of the Achilles heel of that team, so he had some success. This year you bring in CJ GJ, you bring in Brian Branch, who should have been a first round draft pick. Roles start to shift, roles start to change. And I think a guy like Kirby Joseph was trying to find his niche, trying to find his role with this new secondary and his new Detroit Lions team. Then CJ GJ goes down, then Tracy Walker steps in. So a lot of his sophomore slump has been finding his role and finding his space with this new defense I think now he's starting to come into that role come into that space and you're seeing him have some success I think that's a lot of it there Great you go stuff. fellas looking Good forward job. to that game on Sunday man. absolutely just, it's just so fun to be a Lions fan right now I just can't wait for Sundays to get going tonight I know Kool-Aid is going to be locked and loaded on the Pistons trying to snap a nine game Ooh, losing come on, streak Kool-Aid. they are in Cleveland Kool-Aid what are the odds on them snapping a nine game streak tonight against the Cavs man I thought that they would have done it against better than Harbaugh being man. on the side that man. loss <laughs> makes it seem like it's uh, not that great of odds for them to go into Cleveland and uh, get this win man that would be a 10 game losing streak what man. about you Chris I want to. I want to call it to. Now, I'm not the one to complain about the rest, but I went to that game. I went to that Atlanta game, courtesy of my boy Colin. Me and Easy went to the game, and it was just terrible officiating. And look, the Pistons aren't good, and I can accept losing when the team is not playing good. But the free throws were just out of hand. So I did some digging, and I actually caught this on a podcast when I when I was listening to it that the Pistons have a nine free throw attempt differential than their opponent, nine less. The That's highest right. in the NBA, the highest in the NBA in years. So not only they is get no respect. Team, right. not only is this Riding team not getting field. respect on on their offensive side of the ball, but they're following the other teams too, which is typical of a young team, but mm. it's like starting every game nine points in the hole. And when you're a team that doesn't have as much talent, like the, the Detroit Pistons, you just you can't start off nine points in the hole. Yeah, no. Just, hey, it's Chris, up for failure. Listen, Chris and yeah. Kool-Aid, this one's for you. You got two Must minutes. Be. Troy Weaver, do you believe in him? Do you believe in this team he's put together? Because it just sh- it just looks like a it looks like a misfit right now to me. Chris, I'll go to you first. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe in Troy Weaver. I think he's given you nothing to uh, to doubt him. I think that this draft class. Redeemed I thought you were going to stop it. He's giving you nothing. No. I mean, when you, look at, you look at the 2020 draft class, right? That's his biggest flaw. But outside of that, I mean, the Terry's way he's Maxim. hit with the way he's hit with the SAR and Marcus yeah. Sasser is a late round pick. And Great pick. Years before that, Jaden Ivey who's off to a weird start, but playing good when he plays, and Jalen Duren, who's a monster and could be one of the best centers in the NBA. I think he's done phenomenal these last couple draft draft classes, and he set this team up for 90 million dollars in cap space. Now, I, I'm not saying go get somebody because we know the Charlie Go- Villanueva, Ben Gordon situation. But you have the flexibility to now acquire through trades, which he's done. Salary caps, disgruntled stars. Everybody wants to, new, wants to change teams all the time. Now, the NBA is like Tinder. You're just swiping right and left on whatever team you want. So the Pistons are in prime position to, to make some major overhauls. This year is about evaluating the young core. I love it. Go ahead, cool. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, Chris basically said everything I was going to say, covering it on Wilbur Pistons for like the since the summer. Right after the Asar Thompson draft uh, press conference, Troy Weaver met with us with the media scrum, me, Mike Curtis of the Detroit News, and a couple others, John Nile. And he stated, he said, the hiring of Monty Williams and the draft pick of Asar Thompson, he didn't want to block him then. But he said that the splash is going to come by next summer. Like Chris alluded to, Troy Weaver has masterfully gotten the cap space to this point. And when he does go to use that cap space this coming offseason, most of the players that will be on the roster that you're going to be adding these splashes to are all on, like, rookie contracts. Stu is being paid like a backup. And you got Bojan Bogdanovic. And they're going to have another high draft pick. This year, it's about assessing so you know exactly how to dress around these young players. That first draft class, there were some players you missed out on, but you got to think about it. They had no talent base, no talent base at all. He had Bruce Brown and Luke Kennard as his only assets. So, 
Watch him get the yeah. number one pick this year. Not yeah. a chance. <laughs> I appreciate what you guys are saying, so I definitely I'll would defer you. to you. I talked to both of you guys, and obviously it's till January. Where we kind of want to give Monty a chance to get these young guys going. But I tell you like this, since he's been here, each year has been more losses and not less. So that's something to keep an eye on moving into 2024. In the offseason, though, I will give you guys to January. Take it out. Look, it's been a long week, and I know I'm not the only one that's had a long week. I think fall back, messed us all, messed us all up. I'm trying to figure it out. So get some sleep. All you guys go out. It's nothing wrong with relaxing at the I'm house. Just out chilling. Get some sleep. Just get out of here, get some sleep. That's what I plan on doing. So we appreciate you guys. But it's been a long week. This week kicked my ass, and I'm sure it did you too. Get some sleep, get some rest. Go Michigan, go blue. And you know the Lions are gonna come through for you guys on Sunday. Appreciate all you guys tuning in. Appreciate all you guys working. From my man Platty to us on oh, Sunday. Yeah. Day. Oh. Thank you so much, Kool-Aid. We appreciate you every time you step into the booth. Maz, you know I love your brother, Ryan nice, Armani, my brother from another mother. We are Armani and Edwards with Maz, Platty, and my man Kool-Aid. See you guys next week. Have a great week.